Yeah, so we'll get it out of the way. The, uh, got the extension done. Super excited. I didn't want to leave here. My, I've got a freshman. Lexi's a freshman here. Jassy's in eighth grade. Brill's in fifth grade. They've moved enough. We wanted to be here. Greg's been a great boss to work for. Unbelievable. Dr. Bell's great president to work for. And board's been super supportive, you know, from Fess all the way down. So we, we've we, we've wanted to stay here. Uh, we're having a successful season. It's great to have the players we have. It's, uh, extension's done. We're not going anywhere. Didn't want to go anywhere. So that just puts to rest all those rumors. It helps in recruiting. Helps bring some, some st stability to the program. And we can get back to concentrating on basketball games and moving forward. So... You know, as far as uh, LSU goes, uh, you know, we this is the third team we played for the second time. You know, the first time was Mississippi State. I thought they were more improved than us the second time around. Vanderbilt was the second one. We were more improved than Vandy for the second time around. Now LSU has been a lot better at home than on the road. We obviously beat them by a pretty wide margin here, but they've been a lot better at home. You know, our guys got to understand, you know, the Vanderbilt game was coming off a loss. Can we be mature enough and disciplined enough to bring the same energy after a big win as we did after a, a big loss? So, you know, that that's what remains to be seen. I hope our guys have matured a little bit and do that. So, you know, we're looking forward to the second half of conference play. The first half went well. We're trying to tell our guys we need to be better in the second half of conference play than we were in the first half. So looking forward to uh, seeing where our guys are at tomorrow. You mentioned your your daughters in your opening. Just how much has your family kind of grown to love Tuscaloosa as much as I know you, you work here and everything, but how have they kind of grown to, to enjoy their time here? Yeah, they. I mean, they. this is uh, year four here, so we came after Lexi's freshman year, which is a hard time to move. So th they've really grown to like it. They've got friends here. Lexi's freshman year, super involved or sorority and different things, you know, they they like it. Tuscaloosa is a nice nice area to raise a family too. So I uh I'd like to be here a while. Brielle's in fifth grade, she's still pretty young. So we're we're uh we're trying to hang out here for a long time. Lunch on you today. Yeah I got I got lunch, you guys <laughs> Um, not not too many of you. We can, we can afford to. <laughs> What's the importance of getting a new arena built now? Um, obviously, the, the extension's a different thing, but but uh, how important is it for the program for that to get done and uh, as soon as possible? I mean, Greg and I are on the same page with this. We both know it's a high priority. The department's fully behind it. You know, it's – can't snap your fingers and it's done, though. So – Craig's working with President Bell on the Board of Trustees. I've talked to different members of the board. They're, they all know the importance of it. We're all on the same page, to be honest with you. You know, we've had a number of donors give already to it, but we need need more to give. It's where it's, it's, where it's basically at. I mean, when inflation took the production cost, I believe Craig said it was almost a quarter billion dollars to, to build the thing last week. So it's just we, we got we got to get the money raised, but we're fans have been super passionate about it. Look, I'll say this. we Hopefully every single one of our games is sell out the rest of the year. Uh, we're, we're getting great support in here. I've said it before. The arena is a bigger deal for the fans, the donors, the people that come watch the game, than it is for the players and the coaches that coach in it. We've obviously proven we can keep the program at a pretty high level, you know, here, but but it is a hundred percent a priority for Greg, myself, the entire athletic department, the university as a whole, and they're, they're working on getting it done. But you know, there's it's a process. It's not, and they're not putting a shovel in the ground next week that I know of. So we're we're going to keep working on it, and we're I know Greg Greg's working really hard on it. I know. You mentioned starting the second half of SEC play, and you've talked sometimes in post game, uh, after games about if we want to win an SEC championship, you got to do this or whatever. 
how much at this point is looking at the standings something y'all are doing at all and talking about with the team and winning the SEC regular season, or is it just more focused on one game at a time? I mean, we're obviously aware of the top of the standings right now. We don't talk to the team much about it because I don't think that does much good. I think you should be as locked in as you can possibly be for every single game you play, whether you're even up one, up two in the standings, and it doesn't matter. Our goal right now is to be improving from one game to the next. So wherever we're at in the standings compared to everybody else is irrelevant as far as being locked in and ready to play the next game. So we're at, we're at the, the play now. Today's day and age, like all the information's out there. The players have access to everything, so it's not like it's not out there. So, you know, but I, we don't talk about much because it doesn't have anything to do with our preparation for LSU and after LSU preparation for the next team and follow, follow, you know, on and on and on. So we're really just trying to get locked into every day, having a great practice and being prepared to play the next team we play. Don Wells has contributed basically every other facet of the floor, rebounding, playing solid defense, but the shot really hasn't started falling yet. What do you kind of see from him? Is he present too much or is it a matter of him continuously getting more reps and getting back more to game speed? Uh, you know what? I um, the, the injury didn't help him because he was really shooting the ball well in practice, like as well as anybody on the team before he was out for that extended time. I think he's just got to get back to feeling comfortable, get reps up. I mean, he's, he's got to get in the gym and shoot, which – we're having all our guys get in the gym and shoot. So, but I, the good thing with him is he's still being, like you said, he's productive in every everything else. He's playing hard on defense. He's rebounding. He's a veteran with experience. He's just not making shots for whatever reason right now. But I, he's got four years of college experience, making them at almost forty percent clip. So I think it's going to come. Kind of like we all knew Namari could shoot in practice. Watching him, like that was going to come too. So last game that came for him. So. Hopefully we can get all those wing shooters that we anticipated being great shooters this year for us, making shots at a high level. Namari, Rylan, and uh, Dom, all three. It would be great if we get them all shooting it like that. You talked about rematch games or just the second leg games in the, in the past. What do you tell your team after they're coming off of a 40-point win over LSU the last time they played? I mean, uh, the last thing I told them in video this morning was it was the second half score was 47-44. So – great we came out and hit 14 threes in the first half and looked great we, we didn't play very well in the second half our defense wasn't good it was pretty much an even game the entire second half so I uh, and, and we're playing on the road this time so I uh I think we got to play better to be honest with you we, we can't you know come out and relax for 20 minutes so we talked about having a full practice you got to practice hard from beginning to end you got to play the game hard from beginning to end so we're just going to come out and play. So, you know, and there's – in this, you look at the second half, there's, they, they attacked us in ways that hurt us. we we got to make sure Williams isn't getting any threes off. Got to make sure Miller's not getting any easy looks off. You know, and they, they've got some shooters that can make shots. So one way to get upset is to give shooters open looks. You can't be giving their shooters any open looks. Yeah, just wanted to ask, you, you had mentioned, you know, some of the rumors that were out there. Just how much have you had to deal with that on the recruiting trail? And just what has it been like maybe getting advances from other schools in terms of trying to gauge your interest? Yeah, so it's so one good thing with having an agent is I don't take any calls from any other schools. It's And I basically told my agent to get it worked out here. I don't want to go anywhere. So I don't even know if anybody called him because he didn't let me know if they did. I, I didn't. So we really didn't have any talks with anybody else, to be honest with you. And there's not that many jobs open right now anyway. So it it was more, I mean, we're in social media day, so everybody wants to put their two cents in out there. And people you try to use it against you in recruiting. So it's it's obviously been brought up in recruiting. Is he going to be there or not? I've been asked that by recruits. The answer is real easy now. We're not going anywhere. Buyout's big for a reason because I don't plan on leaving anywhere. I was a high school teacher not very long ago. I'm not paying a $12 million buyout. So we're, we're, we're here. It's a statement that we're here. We're, we're building this thing. We plan on continuing to build this thing moving forward. We'd like to continue to bring in top 10 recruiting classes. And this is a statement that we're going to be here to be with them the entire time they're here. Not that I think that you've ever been someone who is particularly motivated by money, but 
after getting that big extension, how do you, what is your mindset to kind of stay, you know, locked in and not get lackadaisical? It's a good point. And, you know, I, I love working for Greg and Greg and I have actually had some discussions just on coaches in general out there. And I, I, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I haven't been one that's been motivated too much by money. If I was motivated by money, I would have quit coaching a long time ago when I was making $4,500 as the basketball coach at Romulus, uh, putting in 40, 50 hours outside of teaching to coach. So I, I coach because I love coaching. I love working with the guys. It is nice to be able to be compensated for, for it finally. You know, it's a lot of high school coaches out there that put the hours I put in that aren't compensated for it like I am. But I, I I hope it doesn't change me. I don't plan on it letting change it changing me. Like I look, I'll say this. Co coach we said it at Buffalo when I was debating whether to leave or not. Like there's coaches that make a whole lot of money at this level that go home miserable every single night because they're losing. And the money they're making doesn't really make them happy. So it's a lot easier job when you're winning games, I'm motivated by giving our players the best chance they can to win the game by helping them achieve their goals and dreams. And like I said, it's nice to be compensated for it, but the money doesn't really make you happy when you go home at night. You go home a loser at night, you're still miserable. So we're going to be extra motivated to continue to win because it's a lot, a lot more fun during the season when you're winning games and the players are playing well and achieving their dreams as well. You mentioned the high school coach element of it. I know that gets brought up a lot, but on a day like today, does that allow you to kind of reflect on where you were just a decade ago and kind of how your career has progressed? Yeah, I mean, 10 years ago, I was still coaching high school, trying to figure out how to win a state championship in 2013. So, yeah, I mean, for a couple minutes, you get to reflect and you hear from some former high school assistants, former high school players, people back, you know, your name gets in the news for a day or two and they hit you up and you got good memories of the times you spent as a high school coach. So, you know, I, I love those guys. I love my former assistants and former players at Romulus and the teachers and everybody back there. And it's, it gives you good memories about what you were able to achieve with those kids. And, and the coaching's not that much different. There's more pressure, ex, ex Exterior pressure put on you at this level, stakes are higher. At the end of the day, you got to have great relationships with your players. They want, they need to want to play for you. You got to be able to game plan in and out. But you know, there's a lot of similarities to it. It's just not as, it's not as out there in the media at that level. And to be honest with you, I think about it all the time. Like, like when you're a high school coach and you don't get scrutinized nearly at the same level as you do here. You can experiment with a lot more stuff. And I was able to really form my foundation, how I wanted to coach, kind of experiment in different things, do that, pressed one year, you know, every single possession. Like, okay, I didn't, didn't really like that, open the floor. There's a lot of things that you figure out as a high school coach. And it, it was fun doing it. It was gave me a lot of experience as a, as a head coach for 11 years there. So, yeah, a lot of fond memories from that, different times. In your life, you get to reflect on them. This was one of them. Good morning, Coach. Um, if, you, if you don't mind me reading something for you, um, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Coach, with that being said, has it been easy for you um, as a coach, as a man, as a father, as a supportive husband to Crystal? But what does it mean for you and your team to see another day and to continue to persevere uh, with the Lord's blessing and the future of the Alabama basketball team. Is that James 1 there? That's good. I had that memorized at one point in my life. Uh, we've been through some adversity. Uh, everybody in life goes through adversity, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, our family went through some adversity in the past. This program's gone through some adversity in years past, gone through some adversity in, in the last couple of weeks. So, you know, you guys know I'm a man of faith and, I mean, as you read there, count it joy when you face adversity. So then why is it a joy to face adversity? Well, it makes you stronger. That That's what it's about. So I, I 
the strongest men, the strongest companies, the strongest teams all face adversity, and it makes them stronger. Like, if you're weak and adversity comes, it, it ruins you. So I think you build a foundation for days where the adversity comes, and then you've got to, you know, move forward based on your foundation you've got built and try to try to make help and make you stronger. I think I think the adversity our teams faced the last few weeks is we've grown closer and tighter. Shoot, I, I mean we've had major life changing adversity as well as just small adversity like losing a game. And a basketball game's not really that big a deal in terms of life. But we got handled pretty well at Oklahoma by thirty plus points. That that those you know, your team can be very fickle at this age, you know, very inconsistent you can be. So how, how do they respond from, you know, being down 32 on the road to Oklahoma after you were ranked number two in the country? I think we've got great leadership. Guys stepped up. Okay, this can make or break us this game. And we've, I think you saw how we responded. Hopefully uh, we don't have to continue to face adversity that we put ourselves under. Like, you know, face some adversity that, it's uncontrollable, but the stuff we have control over, let's try to, you know, do better at that. So, yeah, but that great passage, if I had it memorized, I should probably go back and memorize it again at this point. But, yeah, it was good. Thanks. Thanks.